And one of the things that we think is really exciting and promising about um, moving this to the fiber-based network is our, our partnership and um, access at Starlight in Chicago. And again, I mentioned earlier that we, at our Chicago POP, we um, connect to the iWire network and ride that on over to Starlight, where we have access to Internet 2, National Lambda Rail, and a host of other um, networks. And uh, while this, while access to National Lambda Rail and these research networks is available to the ICN constituents today, given our current um, bandwidth limitations on the backbone and last mile, it's just not realistic or practical for the folks um, we've got down in Carbondale, Southern Illinois University. It's just not practical for them to participate in some of the projects. And so when we migrate more to fiber and re remove those barriers, we're excited about what kind of opportunities uh, that that might open up for more um, institutions within Illinois. And uh, that's something um, over the next you know, months and, and year, you know, looking to explore with um, some of the folks at NLR. Uh, Joe Mambretti is um, very involved with our project and is you know, always kind of bringing that um, advanced research network, kind of that mind to the table. Um, so uh, ag again, we, we think that that is a great role that the state networks um, can play in bringing uh, more folks to the table to some of these different projects. Some other uh, interesting initiatives. Um, Last year, Illinois, um, we had a new governor, so you've probably heard we had a governor who was impeached the first time in history, and my friends at, from Illinois, yes. Uh, but it was a, a dark moment became a bright moment for broadband, and our lieutenant governor, uh, Governor Quinn, who um, then was sworn in, has long been a strong proponent of broadband. And um, I, I say it's the first governor that we've had that knows how to spell the word broadband. And so one of his first um, acts as governor was to sign legislation that required that all new construction projects in Illinois include the installation of conduit and or fiber. So he, I, I've heard him say or his office say, so if we're cutting dirt, we're laying fiber or conduit. So uh, we're pretty excited about the, that um, opportunity. Our, our Department of Transportation about a year ago or two years ago probably installed its first um, large fiber project. It was prior to this piece of legislation. And it was really driven. There was a specific application, a specific need. Who, uh, organization came to DOT, asked them if they would install that fiber. They reluctantly figured out how and, and did install the fiber. At the time, um, one of our largest um, telecommunications carriers um, was very upset about it and very vocal and a, a very much an opponent of that and thought it was competition with what they were doing. But once the fiber was in, I think about six months later, the first public, uh, private company to come knocking on the door to want to lease that fiber was that same company. They, had a, they were bidding on a new um, data center project, and they didn't have fiber infrastructure, and that was the only way they were going to uh, get access. So um, we're excited about, um, a, a, about the opportunities that that fiber is going to bring. Uh, Toll Highway Authority, um, they've been doing this for years, putting fiber and ducts along the toll roads. Uh, very successful model. They've been leasing it to public-private entities for years. Um, some other activities, we have in Illinois a Broadband Deployment Council that's chaired by, it used to be started with our Lieutenant Governor, Governor Quinn, Quinn when he was Lieutenant Governor. Now he's kept that um, as one of his projects now as Governor. And uh, this has been great. It's brought together public and private sector in Illinois and um, to talk about um, new initiatives, um, to foster collaborations. Uh, this group has um, uh, been involved in what later became some legislation, including the, the uh, law to require DOT to include fiber and conduit. Um, there's some other legislation they've been trying to address having to do with um, easements um, and uh, making it um, streamlining the process to get um, permits uh, with it throughout the state within Illinois. Um, so that, that group has been very... Um, 
very helpful and has really opened the door and created a lot of opportunities. Uh, we have a rural health pilot project going on in Illinois. It's, um, the project is Illinois Rural Health Net. Um, it is a not-for-profit organization. It's actually Northern Illinois University has been heavily involved in that, um, in that group. Uh, we were working with them on how they can utilize um, portions of the Illinois Century Network um, for, to reach out to, I think it's about 80 different hospitals throughout the state is included in their initial project. Um, Connect Illinois is our not-for-profit that was awarded a contract to do broadband mapping. Um, they are also doing uh, regional broadband planning throughout the state. And then um, Illinois Cloud is a really a grassroots initiative out of the K-12 community to build some uh, uh, two different uh, data centers, K-12 data centers, um, to do cloud computing and um, to do um, hosting services. So uh, we have uh, started with a school district in um, the Bloomington Normal area and they be, uh, began offering these services to some of the surrounding smaller schools, um, very well received and um, so our State Board of Education is starting to get behind it and looking to put some money behind that and uh, to help schools and again um, try and take some of these common applications that they use and bring them back more into the cloud. And the key to this success is going to be the Illinois Century Network that the schools um, have access, um, high-speed access, and uh, so that when they move these applications out of their buildings that they can still continue to have a, um, a positive experience. Um, Illinois is actually applying for a Race to the Top um, grant. Uh, they were one of the finalists in round two, and they're reapplying for round, uh, or, I'm sorry, a finalist in round one reapplying here in round two and um, the Illinois Cloud Project and technology as a whole is a, a big uh, piece of their application. So we'll wait and see how that turns out a little bit later.